Hello and welcome to another Spastic Kangaroo tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to morph between two objects using shape keys. And what shape keys are, are essentially they're molds that you can morph between in an object. I'm going to just quickly show you where they are, right here. And let's just start by adding one. So, the first shape key you add is going to be the basis shape key. This is the default shape key that all other shape keys are based upon. So, yeah, it's going to be your basis. Um, then the next one is going to be whatever key you want. Let's name this one Pool Vertex. Now what we can do is we can go into edit mode and actually alter our mesh and um, when we tab back out it'll snap back to its original position. And what you can do now is actually if you go into edit mode and just click between the two you'll notice that it snaps back and forth. So you can see there's like that mold there. But we can actually morph between the two using a value slider. And we can drag this up and down to be whatever we want. So, it's pretty nifty. One of the other cool things is you can mix shape keys. So let's add a second one where we scale these together. And then we can start scaling them together, then pull the vertex out. And it all plays nice and works together. So that's good. You're probably already seeing some of the really cool things you can do with this. But there are a few limitations. First of all, you can't morph, uh, like you can't add topology on the fly. What I mean by that is you can't say go in here and subdivide this and then extrude this bit up. Oh, it looks like it's working. And then when you go back to your basis shape key, tab into edit mode, it is not actually doing that. And the extruded topology that we added is actually just lying right on top. So that's the first limitation. And the second limitation is you can't morph between two meshes. So it has to have matching topology. That's the term. And basically what that means is it has to have the same vertex count and the same basic edge flow. So we can't say make a monkey uh, where's a monkey morph into a cube even if we have the same number of vertices I mean I can just let's see how many vertices 515 wait no 507 so we need to make 507 in here uh, 418 452 486 507, never mind. So we need to make a few more cuts in here. Let's just subdivide these. Oops. 504. 510, that's a little bit too much. Uh, let's just add a cut down the middle. 505. All right, we need one more cut down here, and we'll be at 507, 506, because I didn't add new vertex there, 507, there we are. So it has the same number of vertices in this guy as in this guy, and you may be like, um, let's see, there's a transfer shape key, but that doesn't actually do what you're expecting it to do, because now when we drag the slider around, nothing changes so yeah just one of the uh, things about shape keys but one of the primary reasons people use them is to let me just reset my cursor is actually for face rigs what's really cool about them is you can control them with drivers and since they all play nice together and they all um, they're all very easy to edit. You can get things such as wrinkles and, I don't know, expressions and things that you couldn't get if you were using regular weight painting. And I don't even think it's possible to get wrinkles with regular weight painting. It might be, but it would be super difficult and worth more time than it was necessary. Um, and it would be take more time than it was worth. That's what I meant. <laughs> okay. So, we're just going to create a simple cube to sphere animation let's add our basis here 
add a new one, name it Sphere, and go into edit mode, subdivide our cube, press Shift Alt S, and that's the two sphere function. If you didn't know that already, um, right here, we set it on full one, and now we can drag the slider to make a sphere. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually control this value with a driver. Now, I'm not going to go into full detail about drivers, uh, but if you do want to see a tutorial about that, make sure to comment below, and I'd be very happy to do that. That's actually something I'm interested in um, that I'd really actually like to make, but it would take some time, so I need to see if people were interested in that first. So what we're going to just do is add a driver. Now, we'll just go to our animations um, scene, uh, layout and drag our uh, F cur well, our graph editor up so we have some more space here and then we're just going to select driver from the mode so let's just add something to control this object I'm going to use a um, an armature not because it really needs an armature to work but I like having control all objects as armatures it's just kind of a thing I do. So if we just select our key here and view the properties, let me just uh, get our value open. There we go. Okay, you'll see a bunch of stuff. You'll see a lot of crazy things, uh, lots of numbers and stuff. But don't worry, it's really not that difficult to understand. Um, all we're going to do is instead of using scripted expressions, we could do this, but it's just, we just need to sum the values anyway. And we're just going to select our armature, bone. And so now when we move along the X location, it's going to add the value of the X location to the value of the slider that we added a driver to over here. So now when we drag this uh, along the X, it will turn into a sphere. And this is how people make facial rigs. And you can do some really cool things like edit the curve, but as I said before, I won't go into detail about that. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys this time. Like the video if you learned something. Subscribe if you want to see more of my tutorials. They're surely coming in the future. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you all next time.